The Lenovo Y27 that I've got behind me is a 1440p IPS monitor with USB Type-C connectivity. It can be found for around £300 in the UK and around $250 in the US. If you're interested in purchasing it, the links in the description below will take you to your localized Amazon store. And also down there, you'll find some alternative suggestions that you might want to consider. Now, before jumping into this review, if you have social media, I'd very much appreciate to follow on Instagram or on Twitter. And furthermore, if you're interested in keeping up with the latest news or reviews on electric or hybrid vehicles, do check out Totally EV. I'm effectively doing a new car review every single week. Now, aside from its core specs, the Molitor has a 75 hertz refresh rate, a quoted four milliseconds response time, and has also got AMD FreeSync technology built in. And we'll touch upon these points later down in this review. Furthermore, in terms of display inputs, it's got DisplayPort 1.2, HDMI 1.4, USB Type-C 3.1 with 80 watt power delivery, and it's also got a two 3.0 USB Type-A port, which can be accessed via the Type-C port, and you've also got a 3.5 millimeter jack headphone output in order for you to output audio via the monitor, in other words, plugging in a headphone. Now you can also rely on the two three watt speakers, and in this respect, I actually found the sound quality to be decent for built-in monitor speakers. I will always suggest people to get bookshelf speakers or a DAC and headphones, in order to better their overall listening experience. But if you're gonna be using it for basic music listening or indeed for Windows notifications, then of course the built-in speakers will be perfectly sufficient. Now as for design, the monitor in my opinion is very stylish, not only due to its stand in terms of the look of it, but also due to the fact that the monitor has a four-sided borderless design whereas some of its competitors will opt for a three-side borderless design and a thicker bezel at the bottom. However, this has its limitations where the built-in stand provides only tilt adjustment. If you want height, swivel, or indeed want to rotate it, you're gonna to have to look at other solutions out there. But that shouldn't be a problem because if you want to retrofit your own stand or indeed attach it to an existing stand that you have, the monitor has support for the Visa 100 times 100 standard. So therefore it should be perfectly fine and quite easy to in order for you to fit this monitor in your current setup. And so now we move on to the OSD which can be accessed through some inconveniently placed physical buttons that are found behind the bottom right of the monitor. Now through the OSD you can see you've got brightness controls and ignore that uh, level, it's just because of the camera to pick it up. You've got the display modes that you can choose from. I would suggest standard mode. Overdrive, we'll touch upon this in terms of gaming, but you'll probably want to leave it on normal. And then if you go back, you've then got the color options. So you've got a few different ones to choose, and we're going to cover these in the picture mode section, but you're probably going to want to go for neutral in order for you to maximize in terms of the overall brightness. Of course, you might want to go for sRGB as well. You've got low blue light mode as well, and then you can customize the RGB values as well. Then you've got the audio, so the audio configuration, it's got the uh, speakers as I mentioned before, and you can adjust the volume over here. What I did find slightly odd, however, is the fact that in terms of the volume adjustments, they're done in five increments. So in terms of its lowest volume, five, it's not actually as low as I would expect it to be, and it would actually be nice if you could actually have incremental up, um, a volume updates, in other words, a singular uh, update. But anyway, that's the case with the built-in monitor. Then you've got a different display ports, uh, or display um, connections, and then through here, I found it quite interesting as to they have got the general settings of the monitor, including OSD, and then you've got the FreeSync option found inside over here, which I just find a slight odd inclusion to find FreeSync in here instead of in the other menus. But nevertheless, that is the option, and then you've got, of course, the ability to reset all the settings. So now we get on to image quality, and as you guys might remember, the monitor has a 1440p IPS panel. Now tested in its sRGB mode through the OSD against the sRGB color profile, uncalibrated, the monitor gets 99.3% of the sRGB gamut coverage and hits 121% of the gamut volume. As you'll be able to see, it actually overextends in terms of the sRGB standard and actually doesn't seem to falter. However, when it comes to color accuracy, again, tested against the sRGB standard, it's actually not that impressive. What I found is an average delta E of 2.17 and a maximum of 6.64. And this was tested at its sRGB mode, which is also limited in terms of overall brightness. I also found it a little bit disappointing to feel that the contrast ratio sat at 870 to one. Now, if you were to move over to the normal color mode, so therefore out of its sRGB mode and therefore not limited in terms of brightness, the contrast ratio goes up to 940 to 1, whilst surprisingly the Delta E also drops slightly in terms of its average Delta E to 1.9 and maximum at 6.98. 
ultimately what I'm trying to say over here that the monitor won't be color accurate for those people who are going to be looking to use it as a video grading or photo editing monitor. However, to the average Joe, the IPS panel will provide lots of pop in terms of its color and therefore will be pleasant to the eyes. And furthermore, you don't get kind of this kind of washed out look as you would see on a VA panel and the viewing angles, of course, are very good. Having touched on the brightness, the monitor gets up to 256 nits in its sRGB mode and in outside of its sRGB mode, it'll get up to 362 nits and in terms of minimum brightness it's actually surprisingly high at around 98 nits. Now as for brightness uniformity of course there's going to be panel lottery but in my case I didn't find it too um, impressive given that the corners of the monitor seem to be a little bit deviating off the center point. Now as for backlight bleed again it's going to be panel lottery in my case it was a little bit bad in terms of the bottom corners but again your mileage may vary and given its IPS panel it's no surprise that you see a little bit of backlight bleed. Now while this Lenovo Y27H isn't a gaming monitor, I did of course put it through its paces. Now it does have AMD FreeSync, but I don't have an AMD graphics card, and instead I've got an RTX 2080 Super by Nvidia. And here, connected over DisplayPort, I was able to run the G-Sync Pendulum demo. I did notice a little bit of stuttering in terms of its G-Sync range, in terms of VRR range, and again this might vary depending on your setup, and of course if you've got an AMD graphics card you might get better experiences. But given the monitor is capped at 75 hertz, you should be expecting a pretty slim uh, VRR range, in other words you're not going to get the full spectrum and therefore not going to be benefiting from higher refresh rates either. Now very much on this notion, the monitor has a max refresh rate of 75 hertz, and therefore isn't a gaming grade monitor, at least not in my opinion for competitive gamers out there. Nevertheless, I did put it through its paces when it came to using it on Counter-Strike, and I was actually pleasantly surprised by the low input lag that it had. Here, the monitor does respond very well to my inputs, and actually made me very much have a pleasant experience, at least on Deathmatch on Dust 2. However, the same couldn't be said about its response time. Now, while Lenovo's marketing claims at around four milliseconds response time in its extreme mode overdrive, what I found is that the extreme mode overdrive is simply unplayable. Even in a potato looking game like Counter-Strike, you will notice a lot of inverse ghosting, in other words, purple trail. In this respect, what you should do is dial the overdrive one notch down and accept the fact that this monitor isn't a gaming grade monitor, at least not for competitive gamers, and has a little bit of inverse ghosting in terms of its medium overdrive, but gives you a little bit of a middle ground. As a result here, I found that the monitor does take a little bit time to respond when moving through scenes or let's say changing guns and things like that. You do notice it to be a little bit sluggish in comparison to a gaming grade monitor that has good response time and a good input lag. And as a result, if you're a competitive hardcore gamer, you shouldn't ever be considering this monitor in the first place. If, however, you're a casual gamer, then you might want to consider this monitor purely because of its low input lag, which will therefore mean that if you're using a controller or indeed a mouse, you'll find that the monitor responds to your inputs very well. So, in my opinion, it's actually a decent performer when it comes to gaming, even though it was never set out to be a gaming monitor in the first place. Now, this all really leads me on to my verdict, and here I feel the Lenovo Y27H is a little bit of a catch-22. On one hand, you've got a low input lag, a really nice aesthetics, and an IPS panel at 1440p that runs at 75Hz and has AMD FreeSync slash G-Sync support. On the other hand, you've got really bad response time, you've got a monitor that's not exactly color accurate and hasn't got good brightness uniformity and also has a stand that's limited in terms of adjustments. So as a result, in my opinion, I would suggest some of its competitors. If you're looking for a color accurate monitor, you should look into the BenQ. If you want something that's a little bit more responsive for gaming, well, there's quite a few different suggestions out there, so do check them down in the description below. But of course, that's just my opinion and thoughts about it. I'd be intrigued to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. And of course, if you like this video, give it a like, subscribe and hit that bell notification to keep up with the channel and favorite and share if you feel this, this video will be helpful to a family and friend making an informed purchasing decision. Alright, I've been totally dubbed, take care of yourselves and goodbye.